Hi, hey. you're about to watch a date the Hallmark episode. Mm -hmm. Thanks for doing that. We want to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Philo. You can get 25% off your Philo membership and watch all of the movies we're talking about by going to philo.tv slash DTH. Unlimited DVR, all your favorite channels in one place. Go to philo.tv slash DTH. Philo is for everyone. Enjoy the episode. This is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, I'm Brand, and I love Netflix Christmas movies. I'm Dan, and I despise Netflix Christmas movies. I'm Alonzo, and I'm beginning to have serious doubts about Netflix Christmas movies. And this is, is the, the Deck, Deck the, the Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Another Monday, another day to say, hey, let's celebrate Christmas today. Yeah. You know how I know we're ready to go? Huh. You and I just split a dozen donuts. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a lie. Uh, Alonzo doesn't know that. He's on oh. the West Coast. We just split a full Fuck dozen a full dozen Krispy Kreme donuts. Um, okay. So we did it. We did it. We've already we've In already our defense, which, you know. We uh, typically eat lunch right now. We do. We, we are, we're early yeah, We're bird. early we, lunch. We show up with the early bird. We, yeah. And so knowing we were doing this. And we wouldn't eat lunch for a we, while. We would. We decided, you know, it would little, help. a little something to tie, <laughs> something you over. To tie us over. That's how, about, right. how about five and a half donuts? <laughs> Because we didn't eat a full, we didn't no, eat no, a full. There's a half of one donut. There's a half of one donut. That's right. Yeah, so. We had some restraint there. <laughs> Either that or the island donut just isn't good. That's the problem there. It wasn't. If it was good, if it was an original glaze, it'd have been gone. Pineapple. It, no. It's 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 like a it's got a blue frosting and like a a, a a like a coconut tree on it and like this looks like graham cracker dust like it's supposed to be the beach. It just doesn't mm. taste very good. I'm not sure of the point of it, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we just we just said it was a pass. But I ate you one. You ate one. Yeah. I ate my full six. You ate your six. <laughs> I had my five original glazed and we try and then I, I had that and I just said I can't do it. This isn't good. You know those little uh candy candy letters that go on cakes sometimes, you yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's You're what technically that, not supposed to eat them, but yeah. Yeah, I ate them. Oh, he loves it, them. It was I love them, man. They were there was one on top of your donut and you didn't eat it, so I picked that off and Thanks. ate it. So I had six donuts and a little and candy a little tree. You know what? So last night, uh, you, I had to go over and borrow some candles from your house. Do you know why I had to borrow candles from your house? I, I, something about uh, uh, one, one my, of your boys yeah. blood all the candles. That's right. And my, my boys had their birthday, and we got them a cake, and they're five, so they know the deal now. This is their first year in full knowledge of the deal, of how great a birthday is. And we bring the cake out, the candles are lit, we sing, and we get to happy birthday to you. And before we get to to you, one of the two twins blows out all the candles. He just <laughs> bogarts it straight from the other one. And the other one is in disbelief, and we don't have another candle in the house. Not another single candle. And so we eat the cake, and then the following night, he's like, I want to blow out the candles, and we can't find any candles. So I walk down to your house, and we do the whole bit a second time, and I cover one kid's mouth so the other kid can blow out his candles. How ridiculous Daniel, is that? Let this be a teachable moment. <laughs> yep. You have twins. You better start doubling up yep. on all this yep. stuff because it's <laughs> you cannot rely on them to share. It was anything. a giant cake. Should have cut it in half. Mm -hmm. and yeah. it doesn't matter. Next doesn't time, matter. next time I'll be better. There, so you'll yeah. learn. Yeah. You'll Individual learn. cupcakes or, with a five candle, whatever it yeah. takes. One but, of my yeah, kids you, maybe just wait till the song's over for no, crying out loud. No. I'm just mm. saying. No, nope. somehow it's Survi on me. Sur survival of the fittest. They're gonna, mm. they're gonna just jump yeah. right in there. It's you definitely gotta, on you. Um, gotta cover we're talking about California Christmas today, which I uh, didn't know existed. No, I, no, no, no. We we chose it because we've heard such good things. Uh, well, you know, Netflix snuck this one in last yeah. year. It was like five right? days it was like the, Christmas. It was the week before Christmas, and they said, "Let's just throw this one in the in the mix." And I didn't, I didn't, I, didn't, I hadn't heard about it. I didn't know anything about it. And, uh, I think somebody in the Facebook group had said, Whoo, but that was about it. <laughs> had you seen it before? Uh... I had not. <laughs> okay. You know what's funny is, is I don't want to get ahead of the game here because we're going to take breaks and stuff, but one of us talking is going to like the movie. <laughs> And, and really? I, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and okay. it's gonna, it's going to be a fun time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Calm it down over there. Let's uh, let's let's talk about it. Let's break this sucker down. Uh, California Christmas originally aired uh, on the Netflix 
on December 14th, 2020. 2020! And I want a little something like this. Joseph Van Aston. He's a rich boy. Um, And he's the son of a a wealthy uh, real estate mogul, his mother. Um, He loves wild women, wild nights, and wild motorcycles. Am I right, boys? Uh, His mom sends him to the country to close on a deal to buy a dairy farm from uh, this family that's refusing to sell, essentially. Uh, Joseph arrives at the farm. And um, just before getting there, he decides he sp- accidentally spills coffee on his shirt, decides to change into a shirt that would make him look more relatable to the people. Uh, and that shirt is uh, You're the Only Ten I See. So off to a good start, JoJo. He gets there, he meets Callie. Uh, Callie is busy gi- uh, helping a cow give birth. Uh, so cool. Um, he is mistaken for the new ranch hand named Manny. Uh, and he just uh, goes along <laughs> along with that. Uh, he decides to take advantage of this. He attempts to gain Callie's trust so that hopefully he can close on this deal. He can convince her to sell if he can get close to her because he's really good with the women. Callie has a little sister, and they both live with their mother, Wendy, who has cancer. To make sure that the real Manny doesn't show up, like he's supposed to in a couple days, Joseph sends his driver and, you know, right-hand man to find the real Manny and uh, pay him to not show up to the farm. Manny capitalizes on this opportunity by making a lot of requests um, in return for his silence. They stay at this fun little house. They pay him for themselves. They play video games, and they drink wine, which we will get to. In just a little bit. Joseph is really bad at his job, doesn't know what he's doing, and doesn't even know that it's called a dairy farm. After work, he goes to a bar, and Callie works there at night and tries to save her from this guy who's giving her a hard time. They get in a fight, and Callie tells them to get out of here by breaking a bottle and threatening to stab them. The next day, Callie shows Joseph a shed full of her late father's stuff and they bond over how they have both lost their fathers and how they both like motorcycles <laughs> and from there they really start to bond and boy do they have the hots for each other she takes him to a small abandoned vineyard on the property and she opens up about the loss of her dad and um, the financial situation and how she's worried about losing the property And that is obviously the sign to, hey, let's start kissing. Uh, Remember Manny. Manny. uh, Manny's not a big wine drinker until he drinks one uh, glass and is able to pick out all of the notes. He's a, he's a, what do you call it? He's a savant sommelier sommelier. Yes, that's exactly right. And he's very good at it. And it'll come in handy, I guess in a little bit. As Christmas approaches, and you wouldn't know it by the weather, Joseph attempts to tell Callie the truth about who he is, but just can't figure out how to do it. One night, he's getting ready to tell her, and they end up doing the dirty instead. We've all been there. The next morning, she wakes up to text from Connor, who is a guy uh, in town who uh, he almost got in a fight with Manny. I mean, not Manny. The fake fake Manny. You get it. Uh, Text her to pictures of who Joseph really is. Then, Joseph's mom shows up and pressures Callie to accept a deal because, uh, hey, your mom owes a bunch of money in medical bills and your dad took out a loan against her uh, life insurance. Oof. A lot there. Callie still refuses the offer, kicks Joseph out and says, get out of here. Uh, so, Manny, <laughs> the wine, they, 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 <laughs> t- they have some of, uh, some of Callie's wine that uh, she only gives his gifts. And uh, Manny's like, this is good stuff. And so they go and take it to uh, this wine guy, this wine expert, and he's like, this is good stuff. This is special grapes. We didn't know we still had. And so uh, that guy goes uh, to check out the vineyard because uh, Joseph kind of set up this whole thing, goes and tells Callie, hey, I got this guy coming. And she's like, I'm mad at you, but, you know, I need the money. So they make the vineyard presentable. The wine expert shows up and says, hey, 
this is good stuff, writes a number on a piece of paper, slides it to her, and she's like, yes, we get to keep the ranch. So I guess it was a lot of money. Joseph, uh, there was also this old barn that was really having a tough go of it. Joseph fixes that barn up in the dead of night, I guess, uh, to uh, to have a place for the Christmas Eve party that they have. Slash, we can still live in our house celebration. Uh, and Callie eventually forgives him, and uh, they they have a wonderful evening together, dancing and whatnot. And then we get like this little little flash forward, apparently, where they're living on a new the, the vineyard, and they have wedding rings on. On their hands and so I guess things worked out and that my friends was California, California Christmas. Christmas it's a California Christmas brand but we did it nonetheless I'm so sorry <laughs> uh, uh, California Christmas people turned it off people, people turned off the podcast after I didn't say A yeah they were like man I, California that's not what I signed up for I can't trust this guy No. Um, let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and we'll break this movie I love down. It. does that sound good let's do it uh, we'll be right back here another hour <laughs> Man, I love Mondays and Fridays because I get to watch Christmas movies. Yeah, and, and it reminds me that Christmas in July is right around the corner. And we watch them from not just Hallmark, but occasionally we go over to the Lifetime, the Up TV. That's right. And I just wish there was a place where I could get all those movies in one central location. Brandy, you know of such a place? What's that? Is that the sweet, sweet smell of Philo? You can smell Philo. You can. That's how good it is. Wow. And you know what it good, smells you can like? Smell. It's a good deal. Dang it, you took my joke. It's <laughs> such a good deal, you can smell it. From a mile away, because Philo is giving our listeners 25% off the first two months. That gets you through the end of Christmas, July, and you will be very happy that you're saving money while watching the movies that you love. Unlimited DVR, all the channels you want. Even your kids have things to watch. Philo's for everyone. Go to philo.tv slash DTH to save your 25% over two, percent over two months. <laughs> I'm That's rubbing Philo. off on you. <laughs> TV slash DTH. Welcome back, everybody. We're talking about A, California Christmas. It's not the only one. It's one of many California Christmas. California sucks. Da, yes. na, na, na. All right, go ahead. Uh, we're talking about it. We have four seconds to do so, and we're going to start with a hot take where we share exactly how we felt about this movie. I'm going to start with my good friend, Alonzo. Alonzo, you mentioned this was your first time seeing it. It slipped through the cracks in 2020. Is your 2021 better now that you've seen it? Let me say this. <laughs> like Bran, I, I love a year-round infusion of, okay. of Christmas stuff. That's that's how I got into this podcast. That's why I love doing the show with you guys on Mondays. It's an excuse to, to get a little, little, little dose of the holidays every week. Uh, I just want to say, as somebody who lives in California, I deeply apologize for this whole thing. <laughs> I don't know what California did to deserve this thing, but this is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life, Christmas or otherwise. <laughs> I, this is the week where this show feels like work. Yep. Uh, this was agony. Barely Christmassy. Um, just inept and just some really weird choices and just generally speaking i can have, i can imagine why even netflix was like you know we have this movie but don't tell anybody <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine the people who made this movie while they're on the set they're like, it's not like any real film critic is going to watch this movie <laughs> 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 little do they know the uh, rap salons of Duraldi's on the case <laughs> yes sir <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, here's the thing with it. Um, once you come to terms, once I came to terms with the fact that it's not a Christmas movie, despite the fact that every <laughs> few minutes they put the word Christmas on the bottom left hand corner uh, to remind you that Christmas is coming. Um, I don't know. I had a fun time. I really liked the two, two leads. Uh, they're married in real life. They're married in is real that life. the word? Exactly. So, um, I thought that was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed them. It was, uh, uh, you know, everything compared to the gathering to seems like a blink of an eye. <laughs> but this did seem long because it was there was a lot that could have oh, been cut out. When this says thirteen days until Christmas, I died a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. For sure. Yeah. So it is long and um, it is uh, not great. Uh, but you know what? I uh, I enjoyed it. I had fun watching it, and so that's really all that I can ask for. I think out of a movie that that comes on Netflix around Christmas time and they don't talk about it. 
<laughs> some somehow if you do some like digging at the bottom of the dumpster fire like once it's cooled off <laughs> in the ashes you're gonna find a christmas in california i don't know <laughs> what part of the the most godforsaken part of california is it's this movie Where, wherever they filmed this movie that is the part of california you never ever want to visit i feel like i saw a few tumbleweeds blow by that could have just been the fact that there was no soundtrack for most of the movie and it was three hours long <laughs> like this was the this was the extended extended cut of a bad Christmas movie. The choices it being interesting, uh, that's that's an understatement. There are some interesting choices. There's not a lot of great acting in this movie. There's some stuff, sadly, that I think could have been really funny had they gone in that direction a little bit more. But as it stands, it just stands squarely in the middle of awful. It doesn't really lean, you know, lend itself to having those funny moments because the character of the real Manny, I actually thought could have been a really fun comedic light in the movie uh, had, had they played it that way. But instead, it's an hour 48, feels like eternity, and it, it's not not a good movie. This Everything I say about Netflix being higher quality than Hallmark it goes out the window with this one. It's, it's a bad movie. I think it was an hour 43. <laughs> hour 47 or 8 with credits, I believe. Really? Yeah. Uh, hour 48, yeah. I think yeah. this is, let, let's just say this is the Netflix equivalent of a Hallmark acquisition. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If Kelly Pickler would have been in this movie, I don't know how much more <laughs> lower it sinks. It sinks, but I don't know how much lower. Yeah, no, that's fair. Mm. Uh, it's time for all the feels. It's part of the show we talk about what in this movie gave us feels. Alonzo, any feels to be found for you? <sighs> well, you know, this movie does that thing where a film that is desperate to make you feel feel something, anything, will go right to um, Dying Mother yep. at Christmas. Yep. And uh, I, I lost my own mother to cancer, and so I will say, if you do Dying Mother at Christmas right... <laughs> You got me. Like yep. I'm in the bag. I'm a super soft touch for that. But boy, when you do it wrong, oh. it just looks shameless. Oh. And and this movie is so desperately trying to make you feel something. It's like, oh, a cancer mom isn't doing it for you? How about uh, I lost my father and my fiance in the same truck accident and I was sitting <laughs> yeah. in the back seat? Like they just load on the personal tragedy. But nothing in this movie means anything. So it just is this weird recitation of like, uh, this, this is also bad, I guess. It, it, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel anything, and and certainly no Christmas feels. Like oh, Lord, they, no. you know, I mean, I get it. Not every movie is going to be, you know, drowned in fake snow, and that's fine. And there's ways you can do a Christmas movie in a sunny climb and make up for it, but they barely bother. I think, uh, you know, on Wheel of Fortune, they have a really thin sliver that's the million dollar thing. You know, I think in the mm -hmm. Hallmark you know, or the Netflix office, their wheel includes a little sliver that says everybody dies. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's where the, the lead, everyone she knows and loves dies. A and they spun the wheel for Ca Christmas in California and it hit everybody dies. And they're like, what, what are we going to do? Everybody's right, got to die. We, guess we got to. Dad like, dies, fiance dies, mom's going to die. It's just, we, we got to do it. We'll, we'll make it work. I'm sure we, let's make the movie longer. That'll make it work. Can you please respect <laughs> the art? It's a California Christmas, Dan. It's not a Christmas in California. I'm sorry. Excuse Res me. Respect the people, art. People are not tuning uh, in anymore. They just turned uh, off because this is not what they signed up for. Don't donut and drive, all right? You clearly are not <laughs> all here today. Doing the best we can. Um, yes, I don't have a ton of feels. Lord knows no Christmas feels. Like, why even tease us with the word in the title? Like, <laughs> just don't do it. Um, but, you know, I, I liked Manny, and I thought Manny was funny. Uh, obviously, I felt like you could have done more with the character, but... For what he was, he was the best part of the movie. Like, I got quite a few chuckles out of Manny. Uh, and so I guess I'm just a sucker for that. But, yeah, Manny. Manny's my feels. Dan? Uh, no, obviously not. No, there's no feels <laughs> in this movie to be had. I, I, I don't – like, it, it, the plot – does not serve it uh, these these actors very well, and neither does this, the script. And it's a movie that really we've seen a bunch of times where I'm acting like I'm this thing, but I'm actually this thing. I'm a secret prince, a secret rich person, secret you know acquirer of things. Andrew Walker and Alicia Witt did it, uh, you know, in the first movie we watched last year. Like mm -hmm. it is a, a common thing, and it just never felt like it. Got, yeah, but like Andrew just, didn't know. He didn't know he was the bad guy. Yeah, he didn't know he was the bad guy. The movie. That's true. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it just is not. It's not very good. And, and it just le lends itself more to questions than anything. I had no, no feels. Zero feels to be had in this movie. Wow, okay. <laughs> uh, let's take a quick break. We'll come back, and we will talk about the wait what's and the what the flicks here on Deck the Homework.
We're back. We're talking about uh, a California Christmas. That is the title. A, a California Cali- Christmas. We got it by the middle of the of the episode. <laughs> I did it. Uh, it's time for the Wait What's the Party Show. We talk about what in this movie made us go, wait, what? Alonzo, did, was there one for you? Oh, you know, I really had to stretch, but I, I have a few. Um, for starters, okay, so uh, Rich Jerk arrives at the farm. Calf is being born. That is the cleanest calf yes. to come out of a cow ever. Like yep. that calf would be have a nice jelly donut smearing of like viscera and whatever. That else calf going on. looks so pissed off that someone dumped water all over her. <laughs> That's what she looked like. She's like, what yeah. happened here? It is. It is squeaky clean. Uh, all right, <laughs> this movie would have you believe that these awful rich people who really want this land are going to go and like m- try and make deals with them when they're about to be evicted <laughs> and the mother is about to die of cancer. Like those vultures are just going to circle. <laughs> all they have to do is wait and it's all yeah. going to come their way. Uh, like the, the, they're making any effort at all. Just strains. I told Bram while we were watching, like I, I hate to be the villain here, but like the bank is not dealing with these people. I mean, the, the rich people are not, they're dealing with the bank. They're just going to yeah. wait and then they're going to yes. buy it from the bank at pennies on the dollar. Exactly. And these people are going to have nothing. That's what's going gonna, to happen. They're going to scoop this thing up by Valentine. Valentine's Day. Yes. So I don't know why suddenly we have to. And, and again, that's that's the thing we hate in these movies. Like when when you know the the Christmas is like the crux of the business year and everything is due on <laughs> right. that day. And like that's as close to being a Christmas movie as this film ever bothers to get half the time, Ugh. except for the occasional like garland or whatever. <laughs> um, milking cows is not a to do list item that you get to when it fits your no. schedule. No, they they need it on the regular right. at the same time every day. That would be. <laughs> first yeah. on the list yeah this Get is up, this is becoming cows. farming tips with alonzo and i'm here i'm here for <laughs> do, do, is that what what farm in georgia were, were your was your family oh, on <laughs> uh you know now if you get now if they get them down with the heartworm you want to make sure that you put them on the strict diet of the no I, I, even i know this about yes about dairy cows and i'm an idiot um rhinestone is no one's favorite movie <laughs> let's be very clear about that no one's favorite how dare movie. you how dare you it's brandon's I, favorite movie i, 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 I defy you to, i defy anyone to tell me that it's their favorite movie it's uh, it's the worst <laughs> what's that um, email address people can reach you at <laughs> hello at deck the hallmark <laughs> that's right yeah uh okay so manny I, I, you're right the, the the most potentially interesting character here uh turns out is this like secret enophile and and like has has a perfect palate for wine tasting he's a savant sommelier a savant sommelier you would think by the end of the movie that maybe the rich people would suggest hey we have a job for That's you right. in the world of wine and not just okay yeah. back to being a ranch hand enjoy yeah. mucking out the stall right. there's the trailer know. manny <laughs> exactly like, yeah, the trailer has a tv he's fine yeah. He mm. has this incredible gift. Somebody needs to exploit it. Uh, and then, of course, the big, giant, red target on this movie. They have actual relations. Yep. They, as Shakespeare would say, they make the beast with the two backs while he is lying about his identity. Yes. Correct. Now, I, I, I have a newfound appreciation for the chasteness of Hallmark movies. That's right. Because, yes, all, always these guys are the, the secret millionaire and the secret prince, and they're lying, and they get discovered. No, how could you? And then they resolve it. Which, if, if they have a few dry smooches under the mistletoe where they hold hands on a park bench, that's one thing. But they do the thing in this movie, and he is lying that's to right. her about his identity. That is so gross. Netflix, baby. Yeah. Yeah, PG-13. <laughs> Keep I, the kids at home. I will um not okay. <laughs> I will uh piggyback off of that. Uh mm. sorry, mm. I had a guy, I don't know. Oh. Um oh. all I could think about when you know they had uh two or three uh, uh makeout sessions, and right. all of those makeout sessions happened while the contract is in his back pocket. Yeah. Now it, that's a it's a risky it's game you're playing. Risky it's a ri- sign here tabs. Yes, stuck onto it's a everything. risky game you're playing, my friend. If you're trying to keep that under wraps and you're doing um, an activity that tend to like you know yes, yes. Th- that that could have gone south real sure. fast, yeah. and he's really lucky. She keeps it didn't. her hands above the waist. Yes, that's right. Exactly. Probably right. did go south. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the 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 sister here. 
Um, at one point, there's uh, some sort of uh, baked good. I don't know what the baked good was, but it's something that uh, needs sprinkles. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the baked good this is, but is it needs sprinkles. going to bother you for the rest of eternity. I know yes. it is. And Callie turns to her while she's putting the sprinkles on and says, hey, not so much because Christmas isn't for two weeks. What? Did <laughs> what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, uh, s- settle down on the sprinkles. We got to ration up. Like, what was it? What was it? You what? can get a tub of rainbow sprinkles that will last you uh, until the next election for $5.99. And she's like, simmer down now. Let's, let's yeah. save them. Save them. We all know that until actual Christmas, you have to keep it light on the red sprinkles, apparently. You know, you don't, like like us, Like we wouldn't eat two dozen donuts no. before we do this show. Yeah, it's two weeks till Christmas. Yeah, it's two weeks till Christmas. Come on. Tap the brakes. <laughs> um, Connor, who is... Um, uh, Callie's Dead fiance's brother. Yeah, uh, I think they're just friends. No friend, friend, oh, friends. Friends. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. He's yeah. He's trying to yes. uh, hit on her. He does. Um, he you know he's not the best guy in the world. He gets drunk and sexually assaults her. That happens in the movie. Oh, yes, I mean, I just you know, which is uh, which is awful. And I would say just underneath that is the fact that he's just wearing a generic black hat the, the entire movie. movie. Yeah. Just yeah. Gene- it's just a black hat, nothing on. What's worse, that hat or uh, Rob Lowe's uh, just a blank NFL hat that he wore to a football game? Oh, I, Rob Lowe had to know. It's right? a great bit. It's a great mm-hmm. bit if he goes bit. and just has an NFL logo on his hat. Like that yeah. would be great. It yeah. really is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all I got. Um, Alonzo took a, a lot of the big farming ones, which were huge for me. But I do want to point out that, like, for a, a, a business that's going under and being swallowed whole by the machine, they're not really doing a lot to try and save it. Um, no one's really working on the farm to produce anything that would make them money. She, the, the girl doesn't want to go help her younger sister, you know, at the b- bakery or whatever. Like, she's taking the day off. Like, no one here actually cares about the farm any more than just saying they care about the farm. They don't do anything that would establish it's actually important to them. When the two leads kiss for the first time, it's up. They go up this hill to this little area where the vines are. They sit on the bench. She had planned ahead. She brought some wine. It's a really, you know, supposed to be like a really romantic moment. And they kiss passionately. And then there is a car horn that I can only describe as being miles away. (laughs) Like it is not in the near. It's not like somebody drove a truck up the hill and went, like it is. It's a long way away. It's a long, it would not even phase, if we were recording this podcast, the <laughs> horn of that sound would not phase what we were doing right now. And they break that kiss up like they're, the world's about to explode. It, it, it is ridiculous. It, country folk, Dan, you yeah. know, they, they're used to peace and quiet. They hear one <laughs> horn and it's like, clearly the barn's on fire. The barn must be on fire. Speaking of the barn, my man went full Bob Vila on that thing in the middle of the night because they specifically <laughs> said three days before Christmas, my dad's last project was he was going to fix this barn up, but it's a mess. And then next thing you know, there's moms going to the hospital. The other moms coming into town to buy the place. He's been kicked off the property, but somehow in the midst of all that, he completely renovates the inside of that barn. How did he do it? It's magic. How did he do it, Brian? I think um, he, uh, that does bring up a really good point, which is, how, and it's, you know, I had two what the Hallmark, so I'll just use it here. How much uh, experience does, uh, was whatever his name is, Joseph have with his hands? Because early on in this movie, they make it very clear. His hands are very soft. He doesn't know anything. And 20 minutes after that, he's just fixing stuff, fixes up a stuff. And then by the end, he's fixing up a full barn. So there is a, he's either um, just, you know, Lot, like very Why? good and his hands are still soft or he is the just the next up and coming big thing he's also a savant but not a savant yes. yeah. exactly Look, right a, a man gets one callus and suddenly he's bob vila yeah. that's right yeah exactly um i, I do want to point out and i hate to be that guy but she has these flashbacks of being in the truck when her dad and 
her fiance die. And it's not a great message to send to anyone watching this movie that if you don't wear your seatbelt, you'll be the lone survivor. <laughs> because that's what happens in that car accident. Dodge Ram T-bones them. Those two guys are buckled up for safety. She's just flopping around in the back seat and she's fine. I can't believe it. Like, let's do a little bit better job telling people to wear their seatbelt. Sorry to bring the mood down. Uh, Joseph, Joseph's driver, uh, he, I know Leo. that the, Leo, he wants to, they want to put him out as this very fancy driver, I guess. But my man wears an ascot to breakfast. And I, like, just by himself, not, not out for breakfast, like robe, ascot. That's impressive. Like, that's an impressive uh, get up. I, I would also like to know wh where, where is the car wash in Petaluma that serves cheese and crackers that's with right. wine that's right. while you're waiting for your vehicle to be detained? I assumed he brought that out of the back of the, the Range Rover, but my thing oh, was maybe. if he's the driver, he's living it up like to be a driver. I, I, I didn't quite get that all together. That's all I got. Wonderful, wonderful. It's time for What the Flicks, part of the show. We wonder what could have been maybe happening. I'm going to start with Alonzo. Alonzo, <laughs> what you got? Uh, I, I want to throw out just sort of randomly, there's a joke early on when when Fancy Pants shows up at the ranch and uh, hardworking uh, dairy maid says, he looks like he's on a soap opera. Because the actor's been on a soap opera. Oh, that movie's idea, that's joke. good stuff. Uh, yeah, my what the flicks is I never want to think about these people ever again. <laughs> so I really have no, I have zero questions about where this could go <laughs> or what happened here. I, I'm just trying to put the whole experience out Behind of my me. mind. Yeah, that's fair. So I, for once, I got nothing. Sorry. <laughs> No, That's fair. I didn't um, have any feels. It works. My, uh, at one point, he uh, is trying to find his driver, butler, whatever, named Leo. Mm. And Man, uh, manservant. Doesn't know where he is, so he pulls out the Friend Finder app <laughs> that has yeah. uh, Leo's location. So don't, I have, don't Google friend finder kids. You're going to find something else entirely. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, oh yeah. I oh, have boy. two questions about this. One, um, does Leo know that he has a tracker on him? <laughs> and either way, I want to know how, like if he does know how that conversation go, Hey, can you share your location with me? So I know where you are at every moment of every day. And if not, how did he do that? How did he, how did he get that out, uh, situation turned? Hey, Leo, give me your phone. Seems very just... convenient. Not a find my iPhone, a friend finder. It's a friend finder. <laughs> so you're mm. saying me there's, there's, there's weird stuff on the internet? No. There's a, yeah, I'm, there's a, that, that name's already in you, so I'm just going to leave it <laughs> All there. All right. There you have it. And, and I'll tell you, that, you know, if, if people want to go back to the first episode I did with you guys on this of this topic, Happiest Season, they set up the joke about the tracking people on the phone, which this movie does not That's bother right. to do. They do a much better job in almost every capacity uh, than this movie. Uh, mine I is, don't know. I mean, <laughs> six of one, half dozen the other. Uh, mine is the girl that sings every night at the bar. Uh, <laughs> I just, where do you get to a place in your life where you have a residency at the one bar in a podunk town and it seems like she is loving her life setup is wild. It too, is crazy. Because she is, it's just her on the piano. She has some sort of setup where she can uh, count off a, a drum machine. I don't know how it works, but she's got, it's amazing. Her setup. She yeah. works for tips and Harvey Wallbangers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that's all I got. I love it. We did, we did it. it, everybody. Yay. Congratulations. Congratulations. Ooh. We're going to be back next week with another really fun one, which is going to be what, Dan? It's going to be the Haley Duff classic, all about Christmas Eve. All about Eve. Christmas Eve. You can find it on Lifetime. You may okay. even be able to set it to record over Christmas in July yeah, on I'm Philo. Sure it's coming you up can, soon. You can search it on Philo, and you can click save, and when it comes on, you, you can record it. No problem. I love that. I love wow. that. Um, that's really exciting. It's I'm very, very close to the classic film All About Eve. I mean, the, the similarities are uncanny this far, yeah. from what I understand. It's with Hillary Duff? Haley Duff. Even better. Mm. <laughs> She's know. older, right? She's that's older. Better, she's got right? more experience, right? That's right. She's, yeah, she's, she's a seasoned professional. That's right. <laughs> Um, uh, Alonzo, would you like to leave us with any wisdom, words of wisdom that you've been kind of stewing on? Uh, yes, don't watch a California Christmas. <laughs> More than fair. There you go. That's, that's all wise. you need. Even that's wise. The, even for the joke value. Yeah, just that's don't. wise. That's, that's wise. All, that's all you need. Um, we'll be back tomorrow with another exciting episode of uh, Deck the Hallmark. <laughs> uh, until then, may we be the first to wish you a very Merry California Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> 
it's just a California. Deck the Hallmarks of Bramble Jam podcast. <laughs> it's presented by Philo TV. It's produced by Brandon Gray and recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. Set decor is by Plum at Haywood Mall. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on Bramble Jam Podcast Network, you can go to bramblejampodcast.com.